Welcome to the spoken tutorial on basic commands of Git. In this tutorial, we will learn about Git repository and some basic commands of Git. For this tutorial, I am using Ubuntu Linux 14.04, Git 2.3.2 and Gedit text editor. You can use any editor of your choice. To follow this tutorial, you must have knowledge of running Linux commands on the terminal. If not, for relevant Linux tutorials, please visit our website. Now we will see what is Git repository. Git repository is a folder where all the data of our project will be stored. It can be located on the local machine or on a remote machine. The difference between normal folder and a git repository is Normal folder contains only files and directories But the git repository contains set of files and directories along with their complete history Now let us learn to create a git repository in our local machine Press Ctrl Alt T keys to open the terminal On my machine I will create a directory for the git repository in my home directory. You can create the directory wherever you want on your machine. By default, we are in our home directory. Type mkdir space my webpage and press enter. So now we have created a directory my webpage in our home directory. To go into this directory, type cd space my web page and press enter. To make my web page directory as the git repository, type git space init and press enter. You can see the message initialized empty git repository. This indicates that git is initialized successfully. And this is the path where git repository is created in our system. After initialization, a hidden folder .git will be created inside the My Web Page folder. To see the hidden folder, type ls space hyphen a and press enter. It shows the .git folder. Deleting this .git folder will delete the whole repository. So you should be very careful with this .git folder. Now we have to set our identity to git. To set the email address, type git space config space hyphen hyphen global space user dot email space priya dot spoken at gmail dot com and press enter. Here I have used priya dot spoken at gmail dot com. You can use your own valid email address. To set the username, type git space config space hyphen hyphen global space user dot name space Priya and press enter. I have used Priya as a username. Please use your name instead of Priya. The name and the email address that we set are the identities of the person who is working on git. Next, I will configure the gedit text editor to give the commit message. Type git space config space hyphen hyphen global space core dot editor space gedit and press enter. Now gedit is configured to git. Here global flag is optional. We will switch back to our slides to know more about global flag. Multiple repositories can be created in a single machine. If you use hyphen hyphen global flag, the setting will be applied to all the repositories in the machine. So, whenever you create a new git repository, this setting will be applied by default. If you want the identity only for a particular repository, then do not use hyphen hyphen global flag. Switch back to the terminal. Now let us check the configuration details of the identity that we set earlier. Type git space config space 
hyphen hyphen list and press enter. Now you can see the editor name, email address and username. I will be using HTML file for demonstration. You can use any file type of your choice. For example, text files or doc files. Switch back to the terminal. Let me clear the prompt. Now type gedit space mypage.html space ampersand. If you are using another file, then give that file name instead of mypage.html. We use the ampersand to free up the prompt. Now press enter. I will copy and paste some code into this file from my writer document which I saved earlier. Likewise, add some content into your file. Now I will save my file. So I have an HTML file with some code in it. Note, wherever I use mypage.html, you will have to replace it with your file name. Next, we will ask Git to follow the file mypage.html. Switch back to the terminal and type git space add space mypage.html and press enter. Now, we will check the current status of git. So, type git space status and press enter. You can see new file mypage.html. This means that Git has started following the changes made to this file mypage.html. This is called tracking. Let us switch back to our file mypage.html and add a few more lines of code to this file. Like before, I will copy paste from my writer file. Save and close the file. Then switch back to the terminal. As before, to check the current status of git, type git space status and press enter. It shows changes not staged for commit and modified mypage.html. This means that the changes we made have not been added to the staging area. Let us switch back to our slides to know more about staging area. Staging area is a file that stores information of the changes that need to be committed. The file contents should be added to the staging area before committing them. We will discuss more about commit in the upcoming tutorials. Older git versions used the term index instead of staging area. Now let us see how to add the new changes of the file to the staging area. Switch back to the terminal. Let me clear the prompt. Type git space add space mypage.html and press enter. To check the git status, type git space status and press enter. Now you can see the message changes to be committed. This means that the file has been added to the staging area and is ready to be committed. Now we will freeze our code at this point. When we attain a particular stage in our work, we can save them in the repository. This is called commit. Each commit is saved with the information of username, email id, date, time and commit message. Now let us see how to commit. Switch back to the terminal and type git space commit and press enter. Gedit text editor opens up automatically to get the commit message. In the first line I will type initial commit as the commit message. You can type any informative message that you want. Here you can see some lines begin with hash. You can leave them as it is or you can delete them. Please write the commit message before or after the hash line. In future, with this commit message, we can identify what we did till this stage. Let me save and close the editor. You will see some details such as the commit message, how many files we have changed, how many insertions we have done and name of the file. Now, let us see the commit details using git log command. 
type git space log and press enter. We have only one commit in our repository. It shows a unique ID which is called commit hash or SHA-1 hash. Switch back to our slides to know more about SHA-1 hash. SHA-1 hash is a unique ID of 40 alphanumeric characters. Git stores all the information in its database by the hash value. Git commits are identified by the SHA-1 hash. You will understand the importance of the SHA-1 hash in future tutorials. Let us come back to our terminal. It shows the details of the commit such as author name, email address, date, time and the commit message which we gave earlier. With this, we come to the end of this tutorial. Let us summarize. In this tutorial, we have learnt about Git repository and some basic commands of Git like Git init, status, commit and log. As an assignment, create a directory in your machine and make it as a repository. Create a text file and add some content into it. Add the file to the staging area of the Git repository. Commit the file to your repository and see the commit details using git log command. The video at the following link summarizes the Spoken Tutorial project. Please download and watch it. The Spoken Tutorial project team conducts workshops and gives certificates to those who pass online tests. For more details, please write to us. Spoken Tutorial project is funded by NMEICT, MHRD, Government of India. More information on this mission is available at the following link. This is Priya from IIT Bombay. Thanks for joining.